Hello and welcome back to the Imminent Collection Anime DVD and Blu-ray Collection Part 3. So in this part we are going from N to the end of the alphabet. That's right, we're going to Z. Actually I don't know if I have anything beginning with Z. But anyway, this is part 3. If you haven't seen part 1 and 2, they are already up of going through all of the anime that I own on DVD and Blu-ray that I have seen. I do technically have a lot more I have yet to see. I will probably be doing an update video at some point. Anyway, let's get straight into it with something that also kind of needs no introduction. It is Naruto Unleashed. So this is Series 1-1. This is the first 13 episodes. I'm pretty sure it covers the Mist Village arc or the, the the bridge the mist bridge I don't know what it's exactly called so I intentionally kept this on here actually the um, the, the point of unleashed is that it's more violent than the TV series um, so <clears throat> I think you know sort of blood and stuff wasn't censored as much we'll take a quick look inside that's the uh, you know famous key art there is Sakura with her long hair and I think we have a bit of a booklet as well. This comes on... Oh, does it just come on the one disc? Oh, wait a second. No, it comes on multiple discs, but they're stacked one on top of each other. It's been years since I watched this DVD. Um, we've got Sasuke and I'm guessing Sakura on the third one. Yeah, there you go. I'm not a big lover of this disc stacking kind of case, but hey, what you gonna do? So. This is the only um, Naruto sort of uh, anime that I have on disc. Uh, just because, like, oh, cool, we do get some storyboards and stuff. Just because at, at one point when I bought this in a second-hand shop, I was thinking, ah, oh, I could get Naruto on DVD. But then I realised that would probably cost hundreds, so I decided to not collect the series but instead actually i forgot about this um but this is also this is like an ova the lost story uh protect the waterfall village it's like a 40 minute ova thing and i think it has an extra episode which i want to say is the sports festival one no it's not okay so this is a short as well um i bought this again kind of back when i was toying with the idea of owning naruto on dvd then I thought, well, I'll at least buy the OVAs and stuff like that. This is uh, not amazing, but I, I didn't dislike this either. I want to say this is the only appearance of, like, uh, was it, like, Three-Tail Chakra Cloak Naruto or something? I can't remember, but this does have some kind of significance, I think. But anyway, I do have the film box set. So the one thing I did decide to collect, maybe, was the film's. So this is the Naruto films, not to be confused with the Naruto Shippuden films. So we'll take a quick look at each of them. So this was the first one, Clash in the Land of Snow. I kind of like this one. I want to say it has been years since I've seen any of these, really. But this was, this is fine. I do like the artwork inside as well. Kind of like the uh, cloaks they wore in Shippuden after... Um, Ah, oh, they, they went to some kind of summit or something, didn't they? The second one, Legend of the Stone Galel. Uh, this this was alright. I think I watched this with friends of the channel, Tim and Glyn. Oh, the disc is, is the art. That's cool. This was fine. It's um, kind of the appeal of these movies is that they're higher budget and stuff. So I do remember the um, Guardians of the Crescent Moon Kingdom. This was sort of interesting because everyone had different outfits. Because I think they went to sort of a... Um, it's kind of a deserty area where everything was very warm. I think Sasuke had left at that point. Um, but yeah, this was fine. I think of the three, I want to say this was sort of like the best one. I think the sort of... The downside with a lot of the Naruto movies is that they introduce a lot of, like, filler characters that are, you know, only for that movie. And a lot of them are very generic. I want to say this one at least had a sort of a sort of interesting premise and plot. Anyway, talking about the Naruto movies, 
I also have the Naruto Shippuden movie collection. Now, this isn't every Shippuden movie, but this is the first five movies. The surprising thing about this is that it's all in one package, because uh, before now, you know, sort of with the Naruto one, there were three separate DVDs, but this is just one package. So um, we have Shippuden the movie, we have Bonds, we have The Will of Fire, uh, we have The Lost Tower, and Blood Prison. So, honestly, I thought the Shippuden movies were a little bit better, especially, well, uh, this run-up, I mean, we may get into the other ones in a second. I personally really enjoyed Bonds. I thought it was just a really good movie overall. I thought the plot was quite interesting, the animation was great, and the fact it did sort of play out a little bit like a Dragon Ball Z sort of movie, like power levels and stuff went a bit crazy. I also quite liked The Lost Tower. Uh, that was where they go into like um, a place that's uh, ruled by like a puppet master and Minato shows up and stuff. And there's, you know, there's sort of like a subplot of a bit of time travel or something going on. Honestly, yeah, I quite like movies two and four. The others were varying in quality. I think one was the weakest. But of course, this isn't the only Naruto movie I have. So I also have the Blu-ray of Road to Ninja, Naruto the movie, which was the sixth movie. Uh, so this is the alternate timeline kind of thing, um, where they sort of enter an alternate universe and it follows Menma, who is not Naruto, who is sort of evil Naruto and stuff. It was an interesting film. It wasn't the best. It was, I think there was a lot of hype for it, and it didn't pay off a great deal, but there were, the last, like, fight in it, I think was pretty nice. I mean, the animation is pretty cool as well. It's a really interesting one. I kind of wish more series did that, where they just did, like, an alternate universe kind of thing. But yeah, not a, not a bad movie, just not my favourite. Talking about anime movies, though, I also have Ninja Scroll. So chances are, if you're into anime in sort of like the 90s or something, this was every... Ooh! Every... Oh, okay. I thought it would give art cards for a second, but no, this is a um, fold-out that explains about Ninja Scroll and stuff. Postcard again. We've got an advert for the Street Fighter Alpha, the movie. Very cool. And also, we got a receipt. Hang on. So, this is a receipt from EB Games, um, which I wasn't even aware existed in the UK. And this is from the year 2001, so the 24th of June. Um, sorry, me. Yeah, me, sorry. Um, so this isn't actually my receipt. This came in here, because I bought this from a charity shop for like a pound or something. But, I remember keeping a receipt in something, so it must have been this movie, but... Yeah, it's kind of cool that somebody bought this in 2001. I think the price they paid was like £9 or something. Which, for the time actually, would have probably been pretty good. But, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen Ninja Scroll. It's a famous old movie. This and like Akira and Ghost in the Shell were like the big... You know, the big first anime movies and stuff. I really like Ninja Scroll. Very, very violent, very edgy. Kind of like, I don't know, it, it's like a bygone era of anime, you know? But I really like Ninja Scroll. Enough, in fact, that I bought Ninja Scroll the Animation. Uh, I saw this in a CEX store. If you live in the UK, you know where that is. Um, they sell second-hand stuff. This is quite cheap, and I was like, oh, I really like Ninja Scroll, so why don't I give this a go? I'll be honest, it's not the best series, but I quite enjoyed it as well. Much like Ninja Scroll itself, this is sort of, it's, it's quite, it's quite action-y. Um, it is a little bit slow. I remember in, in part, there were a few times I was like, eh, I think I'll give this, this away after I finished. But it ended pretty well, and I think I enjoyed enough of it that I thought, eh, I'll keep it. But yeah, not, not the sort of craziest follow-up, I think. I can't remember if this is canonical to the movie, as if, as in, like, the movie happened, then it was this, or if this is just a retelling of it, but it's not bad. This is pretty decent. And on the topic of dark and edgy and incredibly action-packed, we've got Oren High School Host Club, which is none of those. So, 
this, this is one series that kind of doesn't fit the rest of my collection, not fully anyway. And I'll be honest, it's not something I ever expected to like. I watched a little bit of this years and years ago with some friends in our high school anime club. And I was like, oh, that, that was kind of charming or whatever. But I ended up watching it again in a university anime club. And I really enjoyed it. So this, the, the kind of setup is it's a host club. Lots of handsome men. I mean, I'm not super into sort of romancy anime anyway. But, you know, I'm also not really into handsome men. But this was great. This was, it kind of played as a parody to sort of like be shown in, you know, handsome men romance things where the girl who is her, who is mistaken for a boy and joins the host club and stuff. This is a, it's a really fun series. Genuinely, this made me laugh so much that I actually bought it on DVD because I was like, wow, that, that shouldn't have been a series I enjoyed. Like on paper, that's something I'd just be like, hey, I'm sure there are fans, I'm not going to watch it. But I did, and I really enjoyed it. Honestly, maybe recommend giving it a try. Next up is a bit of a classic as well, and that is Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt. Oh, I think just Panty and Stock... Oh, wait, no, it does say with Garter Belt there. This is a Studio Trigger series. You might have seen or heard of it before. It's uh, 13 episodes. It's a very short sort of series. Uh, clearly inspired by Western cartoons like Powerpuff Girls and stuff. This is a genuinely over-the-top mental series. It's, um... It, it's, well, it's hard to explain, honestly. It is just, like, over-the-top in every regard. It's very lewd, very crude. Lots of, lots of very, uh, on-the-nose sex jokes. I mean... I think that gives you an idea of what it is, what it is you're in for. I really like Panty and Stocking. Uh, they never continued it. There was a lot of fan outcry for that, which I never understood because the end of the series was intentional, kind of like sequel bait, but it was parodying it. So sort of, it was it was clearly meant to end here. You know, sort of 13 episodes. It's the perfect bingeable series, I think. Next up is a personal movie favourite of mine, and that is Paprika, or Paprika, Paprika. It's one of Satoshi Kon's uh, most famous movies, very trippy. Um, it's all about dreams and machines that let us view them, and the weird sort of difference between reality and dreams and their, you know, combination. Some people say this was the basis for Inception, I feel like there is enough of a difference that it may have taken inspiration from Paprika, because that came out obviously earlier. But, uh, I don't know, having watched both, I wouldn't say Inception's a rip-off of this, but you know. Still though, Paprika, one of my favourite anime movies of all time. Highly recommended. If you haven't seen it, it's very, very trippy, very weird, incredibly beautiful. Next up is an OVA collection, which is Pat Labour, or Pat Labour, I think it's Pat Labour. The OVA collection won the early days. So, there's quite a lot of Pat Labour stuff out there. There are movies, there's a series, uh, there's obviously manga and stuff. This, I think, was the earliest animated thing based on Pat Labour, or Pat Labour, which was a manga series. So these are OVAs based on them. They are, they are genuinely uh, sequential, but not exactly, if that makes sense. So if you notice as well, he is the basis for the mech from Appleseed, because he's kind of got bunny ears going on as, as well. So yeah, these are OVAs. Some of them tie into each other, but they can kind of be viewed separately as well. They are very cool. I have yet to really delve into Pat Lever, but this is always a good place to start, apparently. So... If you do see this, I recommend picking it up. I think it's pretty cheap still. And on that topic, I also have the Pat Labour movie collection 1 and 2. This is a fairly old collection now. I think all the anime recently released the three Pat Labour movies. I wasn't aware there was a third one. Um, so this is my first, this is my first uh, exposure to Pat Labour. 
The only downside is, so Pack Label 1 could be watched as a movie of its own. It, it's fairly self-explanatory. I think this is technically following the OVA series, so you can watch it in that order. Uh, that is the internal thing there, if you want to pause that to see what manga was offering at the time, as in the company manga, not, you know, the, uh, the written thing. However, Pat Labour 2 takes place after the series. So after the movie, there is a full 26 episode series, and then there is this, and then there is a series that takes place after Pat Labour 2, I believe. So while I have watched Pat Labour 2, I didn't exactly know what was going on. There were lots of new characters and new setups and stuff I was just fully unaware of. So I have seen it, but I do need to sort of watch the the middle part, the like series, to really understand it, which I will get around to eventually. And next up, another Satoshi Kon actually, Perfect Blue. So I hadn't seen this movie until last year. A friend recommended it, a friend of the channel, Tim. And I thought, hey, I'll buy it on Blu-ray and I'll watch it together. And wow, what a movie. This is a very mature movie. Um, this is sort of the, the epitome of anime is not for children. Um, this is a very psychological movie. Paprika was psychological. This is next level. Now, funnily enough, Paprika was, a, well... Uh, sorry, Inception was accused of being a copy of Paprika, and I think there's enough wiggle room. The movie Black Swan is very, very similar to this. I haven't seen Black Swan, but from everything I've heard, it is very similar. I, I haven't seen it, so I couldn't make the comparison, but this is very, you know, it, it's, it, it's not... It's not deniable, really, it is a copy. This movie, though, is incredible. Very creepy. Um, it's unsettling, really. It's sort of, it's not a movie you enjoy, but it is a great movie. It's, it's a hell of an experience. Highly recommend watching Perfect Blue if you get a chance. All right, time for a very quick aside. So the next part is Pokemon. I've got quite a lot of Pokemon. Before we get on to that, though, I do, I have kept all of my childhood VHSs. So I thought we'd take a very quick look. This is the fighting tournament. Volume 10. I want to say it's three episodes. Wait, hang on. Yeah, three full episodes. That is the VHS tape there. They were yellow. God, I love them. Uh, I could never get rid of these. And I also have Volume 11, The Great Race. Again, three episodes. Oh, that one's black, actually. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there was, like, different printings, because this is a bit matte, as you can see, whereas this is a bit glossier. So I wonder if this is like a second printing or something. I also, of course, because I was a child of the 90s, have Pokemon the very first movie, the very first movie? Pokemon the first movie, which does come on a yellow cassette. Oh, apparently I haven't rewound that, I need to rewind. Um, obviously a classic. If you like Pokemon, if you don't like Pokemon, I don't know, maybe it wasn't a classic. Did come with a card, obviously I have the card in a binder. I also have this, which was given to me free at a car boot sale. I don't know exactly how people got this, but this is a behind-the-scenes videotape. Uh, so I think this was released before the movie actually came out, because it advertises here, only in cinemas. Obviously, this is the UK version. April 14th. There you go. Um, but yeah, this kind of just... It, it's the making of behind-the-scenes. It's a... It's a high, oh, actually, it might have come in the sun or the news of the world, maybe. Um... It's a promotional video, but I genuinely, I think I watched this several times as a kid, just because it was so cool, like, seeing the process and stuff. And, of course, I have Pokemon 2000, still, I think, my favourite Pokemon movie. Um, 2000 is just perfect. It works as a movie and as a Pokemon movie. It's, um, it's just so cool. I really like this. Didn't come with a yellow tape. Oh, apparently I've, I'm most of the way through that. I need to rewind that one as well. I think this came with a card as well. I can't quite remember, though. I also have Pokemon Mewtwo Returns, the movie, which is a sequel to the first movie. Now, this, I believe, is an OVA and isn't technically a movie because this isn't counted as the third movie or anything. But this does 
carry on from the first movie. Um, I don't think there's an official version of this on DVD or Blu-ray in the UK. So this is a little bit of a collector's piece, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I bought this. I love Mewtwo. This is... Honestly, I quite like this as well. I think this is the origin of the infamous drying pan scene, where Brock, u Brock uses a frying pan as a drying pan, because it's raining. But yeah, this is really cool. I love the cover as well. Just like such cool artwork. And of course, I've got Pokemon the Movie 3, Entei, and the Spell of the Unknown. Was it Entei, Spell of the Unknown? I don't know, but that does spell Entei. That's the side. There's the back. Another move. That's back to yellow again. Okay. Well, another movie I really enjoyed. I still think 2000's the best. This is the weakest of the three, but I mean, I, I still quite liked it. It did get very weird in parts, because Entei kind of became a girl's dad, but not really, but sort of. And to wrap up the VHSs, I probably watched this the most because it was a Christmas tradition growing up. This is Pikachu's Winter Vacation. I want to say I got this for free because I bought one of the movies. I think these are four short OVA episodes all about Christmas and stuff. Very cute. Had a very catchy song, I think, at the start. It's it's very nostalgic. It's probably somewhere online, but I, again, I don't think you can get this on DVD in the UK, at least. All right, on to the DVDs. So, first up is Pokemon Chronicles, which is a 13-episode series that sort of didn't follow Ash, basically, which was quite interesting. So, um, on the front, no, hang on, sorry, on the back is the, uh, the Raikou movie, TV movie. It was like two or three episodes that essentially made a, you know, a, a movie length thing. They were episodes along with the Winter Vacation, another one. Um, number two had these on them. If you want to pause to see what they are. Basically, they were kind of spin-offs based on various games and like other things, so they tied in to non the, the non-Ash anime, if that makes sense. And I got these all pretty cheap years ago, so it's, it's nice to have, because it is technically a movie on the first disc, but it's not really. And talking about the movies, so this is the Pokemon Movie Trilogy Steelbook. Um, so for years and years, the first few Pokemon movies weren't available on DVD. And they eventually launched it, but also um, they launched them on Blu-ray as one collection. So I pre-order this because these are the three movies that we've already seen on VHS, but obviously on Blu-ray in higher quality and there's a very nice uh, Steelbook collected collection as well. Then I have a pirate copy of Pokemon 2000. I bought this at a charity shop. So I bought this not long before they announced the movies actually, but for a time when I bought this, this actually wasn't available on DVD. Or maybe it was, but I'd never seen it anywhere. So I bought this. It does have like the um, interactive menus and stuff. So they did. They ripped the data, but obviously this is not an official disc, but uh, I know it, it's kind of a time capsule, you know. You don't get as you don't see many pirate DVDs anymore. So yeah, kind of kind kind of an interesting one. And at the same time, in that charity shop, I did also buy a pirate copy of Mewtwo Returns uh, again, which I'm ninety percent sure maybe existed on DVD, but not in the UK. Maybe it existed in America because it does have a menu there. So, I don't know, unless it's like custom made or something, I never saw this for sale anywhere in the UK. Which is why I bought this as well, because, you know, having it on DVD is nice as well. Now on to movies I haven't talked about. We have Pokemon Forever, the, um, the fourth movie, Celebi and Suicune, I do believe. Got some artwork inside, I'm not going to pull that off because it's one of those really annoying long ones. This was, this was an alright movie. I didn't hate it, I didn't love it. Next up is Pokemon Heroes the Movie, which was the fifth movie featuring Latios and Latias, as you can tell there. At this point, I'd kind of drifted away from liking the Pokemon movies, but also I was kind of weirdly obsessed with collecting all of the movies on DVD, so um, I don't dislike this one, but it's also not my favourite. Is that a receipt? 
It is indeed, and apparently I bought this on Valentine's Day 2007. Man, nothing says love. Like, well, technically, they are sort of a male and female counterpart Pokemon. Not officially, but kind of, you know. But yeah, this was an this was an all right movie. I didn't I didn't hate it. Next up is a VCD. So when I was trying to collect all of them, I just couldn't find Jirachi Wishmaker on DVD. I don't know if it'd been released in the UK yet. So I ended up buying this from eBay. I don't think it's official. It is a movie over two discs. Um, it's it's fine. The movie was fine. Not the best way to watch it, but I kind of keep it now as a, as a memento, you know? Next up is, I think, the seventh Pokemon movie. Destiny Deoxys. Genuinely enjoyed this one. I thought it was kind of cool. It had an interesting setup and stuff. Uh, I like Deoxys. Yeah, I thought this was a pretty cool movie. It took place in a kind of futuristic city and stuff. I remember genuinely enjoying it. Definitely one of my favourites of the sort of new movies past the first three. Yeah, not bad. So from here on out, I can't remember the number of the movie. But this is Zoroark, Master of Illusion. Another Pokemon movie. I kind of enjoyed this as well. The animation was pretty nice. The... I remember... The, yeah, yeah, the shiny dog showed up for some reason briefly. But then they didn't really play much of a part. It was... It was an alright movie, it was, it was quite entertaining, but I, I'd far past the kind of target audience for Pokemon movies at this point. I was just obsessed with collecting each movie, as you can tell. Ah, the Pokemon Black and White Double Pack. A interesting idea on paper, but in execution it was kind of mixed. So, within this is two different movies. We have Pokemon the Movie Black, Victini and Reshiram and Pokemon the Movie White, Victini, and Zekrom. So, these are technically different movies. Throughout, different things happen. Uh, Ash takes a few different paths and choices. Uh, some of the po different Pokemon are shiny, and obviously the legendary he interacts with is different. Honestly, between the two, there is maybe like 10 minutes worth of difference. Uh, I have seen both. They were fine. Um, I don't have a favourite one because they were both kind of okay. But, you know, it's an interesting concept. I, I like that they tried it, but the movies just weren't different enough to really sit through an hour and a half each because eh, there's not that much difference. Don't worry, we're nearing the end. This is Kyrim and the Sword of Justice. Uh, this is like movie 13 or something. It has Kyrim and Keldeo in it. Uh, part of the reason I bought this was it came with a promo. And I was like, oh, I'll have a promo trading card because I just got back into the trading cards. But then I realised just how many promos there are, like three or four hundred, or about two hundred for the Black and White series, and realised, oh, that maybe chasing every promo card is going to be crazy. Uh, the movie itself is, it's fine, I, I didn't hate it, again, it's very pretty and stuff, but, eh, you know. Now, next up is genuinely a bit of fresh air, so, at, at this point, I think this is the 15th, or maybe the 20th, I don't know, movie, this was to commemorate Pokemon 20 years, I do believe. So this is I Choose You, which is a sort of alternate telling of the anime. And honestly, it's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's quite different, it's quite quick as well. It sort of retells the anime, but does its own thing as well. This was both visually very nice, and a bit of a breath of fresh air, because it felt like a movie, and not sort of like a, an OVA special that's been you know, dragged out and stuff. This genuinely did feel like a movie event. Um, I really liked I Choose You. And because it's one of the first pressings, came the DVD copy of the very first Pokemon movie, which I now own three different ways, VHS, Blu-ray, and DVD. And the last Pokemon movie, I actually pre-ordered. I enjoyed I Choose You so much. When I heard this was coming out, and it was gonna be the same kind of thing, where it's its own movie and not necessarily relying on the series. That's how you pre-order it, and that is The Power of Us. 
which is sort of sort of vaguely a remake of 2000 but not really Lugia is not very much in it but I do quite like this because it comes with a poster and art cards and much like the first movie honestly it was very it is quite nice it, that it genuinely felt like a standalone movie as well I mean it took place in the Pokemon universe but I like that the plot kind of revolved around the movie characters, but it had meaning as well and stuff. The visuals were great as well. Genuinely, like, this new era of movies, I really dug. I still haven't seen the third movie. Maybe it's not as good. But I think I preferred this to I Choose You in the end, actually. I think what really made the last two movies work is that it felt more like it was movies made for Pokemon fans and not just kids who were fans of the anime, if that makes sense. So it did feel more like it was a film for everyone and not just kids. Alright, next up is Promare. So this is a movie by, I want to say it's Studio Trigger, I think. This was a sort of fairly new movie. I think it came out a few years ago. Um, this isn't a very flashy version of it, it's the standard, that is the regular cover. But I really enjoy this. It's a little over the top, it's a little bit kill a kill, it's a little bit Gurren Lagan. It's a little bit its own thing. Uh, I, yeah, I really enjoy this. Very pretty, very over the top, very stylish. If you get a chance, definitely recommend giving this a watch. Next up is a movie I insist you watch. If you're watching this and you haven't seen Redline, please go and do it. It is such an amazing movie. It is visually amazing. I think the plot is amazing. The soundtrack is an absolute banger. And I want to say this took like 10 years to make, I do believe. I think because they had funding issues and stuff like that. It is an absolute masterpiece. The TLDR is it's basically an insane re movie about racing on uh, uh, like alien planets and stuff over the top in every regard. It is balls to the walls action and highly entertaining. It is amazing. It's probably my favorite anime movie, I think. Redline is just perfect. Next up is a bit of a time capsule. This is Salaryman Kintaro. Although the box says Kintaro anime DVDs for some reason, but inside it does indeed say Salaryman Kintaro. So this is a 90s series, I think, about a ex-Yakuza member who becomes a salary man and sort of nobody notices or he tries to keep it on the down low. Uh, it is very 90s but honestly this is very fun so I bought this in a shop called The Works which usually sells books and stuff but it does sell DVDs now and then and this was when I was just getting into anime, so these DVDs are pretty old now. This is sort of mid-2000s, maybe 2010 at a push. But the thing that really got me was that on the front it says £99 RRP, which does imply that each one of these discs is worth around about £20, which early 2000s I wouldn't have said is too Ridiculous, but I don't think at any point Salaryman Kintaro was ever worth £100. But let me know in the comments if you guys have ever seen this. I think it's a bit of an obscure one. Next up is Samurai Champloo. So this was by the some of the same producers as Cowboy Bebop, but obviously it takes place in sort of feudal Japan instead. You've probably heard of it, or if not the series, you've probably heard of its incredible hip-hop soundtrack by New Jabez, which gave the series like a very unique feel because it was feudal Japan but it had like hip-hop music and stuff. Very very good, very um, visually impressive as well. I didn't think quite as good as Cowboy Bebop but I mean that's very difficult. Definitely worth the watch though. I think Samurai Champloo is... Uh, I want to say there's a Blu-ray release of this as well. I think fairly recently. Next up is Season 1 of Sengoku Basara, Samurai Kings. So this is an anime based on Capcom's version of a Dynasty Warriors game, and it's amazing. So this is set in Sengoku period Japan, and it's basically, it's kind of a historical retelling, except everybody's over the top. Oda Nobunaga sits atop like a throne literally made of skulls, 
Um, Date Masamune has a motorbike that he rides. It is a wild series. I highly recommend watching it if you like Japanese history, or if you just like action series. Next up is a sort of obscure anime movie called The Sky Crawlers. Now, I bought this fully just because it looked interesting. It is a very interesting movie. So, it follows a group of children pil pilots who are kind of forced into piloting aircraft in a battle and they are nicknamed Kildren uh, because they all have sort of special powers and stuff and it's a little bit trippy. There's something extra going on in the background that sort of makes the film a little bit kind of tense and a little bit off-putting. I've only seen it once, I do need to re-watch it. I remember being quite impressed and quite sort of, I don't know, a bit confused by it as well. It's, it's definitely an interesting one. Next up is Speed Grapher. So this is a bit of a, a sort of obscure series as well. Another one that I bought because I saw it for very cheap. So I'd kind of describe this a little bit like darker than black in a way. It kind of follows people who have superpowers, but it's very gritty and down to earth. And it specifically follows this girl who has the ability to photograph people and I believe like hurt them or kill them or something. And she's guarded by that guy. Now, this was a weird one. Like, I like the series, but I didn't love it. I don't know. It's sort of... I want to hold on to it, though, because it's a very... It is a very unique series. And I might give it a rewatch, potentially. But I don't know if I'm doing this in the right order. But I'll show you these anyway. As you can tell, the art is pretty wild. It's, um... It's very creative and quite gritty in parts. But, you know, I mean, if you're interested though, I would recommend giving it a watch, potentially. Um, again, I don't know if this particular version is like out of print or whatever. I doubt it's particularly valuable because I don't think it's a very famous series, but uh, definitely worth a watch as sort of like something less mainstream, you know? Next up is season one of The Squid Girl or Ika Musume. Uh, which literally means Squid Girl. This was quite popular, like a few years ago. It's very comfy, it's very funny. It's about a Squid Girl who wants to invade the Earth, but ends up just making friends with people instead and working on the beach. It is very cute, though. I, I highly recommend giving this a watch for something a lot more light-hearted. Next up is Street Jacket. Now this is a three OVA series, well, I guess you could, well, it, it's kind of put together as a movie. And it's all about magic and technology kind of being married together at the turn of the, sen uh, tw turn of the 20th century. It's pretty cool. The, the artwork is particularly interesting. The setting as well, I really liked. I was always sad that they never made like a full series or something on this, because the concepts are really cool. Next up is the Street Fighter 5 disc collection, but I think it's four movies. So it is. Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. Uh, you might have seen this before. It's quite an old movie. Uh, it's, it's quite fun though. It's th There's a few scenes that aren't particularly true to the game, but overall it is a very fun 90s sort of like action movie. There is Street Fighter Alpha, the movie. Not quite as good as Street Fighter 2, the movie. Uh, ties into Alpha, which was sort of the gen between 2 and 3rd Strike. It's, uh, it's not a bad movie. I think this is the one where there's a kid that joins Ken and Ryu and talks about pork and beans. It, it, it's a slightly weird one, isn't it? It's not terrible. Then we have Street Fighter Alpha Generations. I remember this being a little bit better, it's a bit more action-packed, it's more about Akuma and stuff, which is a cooler, you know, story than just Ryu and Ken becoming martial artists. I think this had quite a few really cool fight scenes and stuff, so definitely worth a watch if you're a Street Fighter fan. And then the Street Fighter Round 1 Fight, uh, which is a animated motion comic. It's It was fine from what I read, it, uh, well, what I read, what I watched. It's, it's okay, it feels like a comic adaptation of something, which it is, and it's a motion comic. You either love them or hate them, I, I just don't care for them. But, you know, it's it's not a bad addition, I guess, to it. Uh, there's also some nice artwork inside. 
Okay, so the next few are actually all in the Studio Ghibli collection. I've ordered them because they each have a number on the side, so I kind of want to keep them in that order. So the first one is Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. This is a great movie. And I think one of the earliest Ghibli movies, it's, um, it's, it's very unique. It's about sort of... Uh, a tribe of people who fight bugs, but maybe the bugs aren't the enemy, but actually friends all along. Definitely worth the watch, though, if you've not seen it. It's, um, yeah, it's really cool. Next up, our number seven, for some reason. Uh, even though this came out later than the ones that come after it, in the numbering order, is Howl's Moving Castle. This is probably my favourite Studio Ghibli movie. It's so magical. It's, uh, it is really cool. A hell of a journey, very visually stunning obviously, but I love the world it takes place in as well. Definitely, uh, definitely recommend seeing this one. Next up at number 9 is My Neighbor Totoro. Uh, this is probably one of the most famous Ghibli films, there's a lot of Totoro merch. It's very cute, uh, he's a very cute cat thing. It's more of a kid's movie, but honestly it is still very like visually appealing and stuff. I really like My Neighbor Totoro. It's, uh, he's, he's a cute boy. It's just a very chill, feel-good movie, mostly. Probably the most famous Ghibli movie is Spirited Away. Uh, I imagine if you're into anime at all, you've probably seen this. It is a masterpiece. It's such a good movie. There's not much I can say, really. Um, that hasn't already been said. Also, inside, there is just a, um, there is a poster, actually. Sorry, I forgot to show you in the other ones. So on one side we've actually got the numbering of all the movies, which is kind of cool, and on the other is just shots of the various movies and stuff as well. But yeah, quite a cool little poster to have. And my last Ghibli film, that is Tales from Earthsea, number 15. Now, I watched it, I didn't mind it, it wasn't too bad, but far from my favourite Ghibli movie. However, I watched it with two people who'd read the Tales from Earthsea books. And apparently, uh, if you're a fan of the books, this isn't a very good adaptation. But uh, I've not read the books, so I wouldn't really be able to say. But you know, it's it's a fine movie, it's quite interesting in parts, but um, yeah, not, not really my favourite. We're getting very close to the end now. Uh, next up is Summer Wars, which is a film uh, directed by Mamoru Hosoda. I think, uh, who also did Girl Who Left Through Time and the Digimon movie, Our War Game. Uh, and this has a lot of similarities to that specific movie. It's a lot about an online threat and people moving through the online world to kind of counteract it and stuff. This is probably my second favourite um, anime movie, I would say. It's incredibly stylish. Uh, it reminds me so much of Digimon the movie, but... Also, it's just, it's such a good, you know, movie in and of itself. It is visually beautiful. Uh, yeah, Hosoda is definitely one of my favourite directors. And, you know, this, I think, is my favourite of his films. Next up, we have Tokyo Godfathers, another film. And it is so good. It's, um, it's sort of a Christmas tale about three sort of hobos who all inherit a baby and try and find his mother. It's quite a sad movie in bits as well. It sort of, it deals a lot with, you know, quite heavy subjects and stuff. But honestly, Tokyo Godfathers is great. It's a Christmas tradition for me. I always watch this because it takes place around Christmas. And it is feel good, ultimately. I, I really enjoy this movie. And we're ending on a bit of a trilogy of films. That is Yu-Gi-Oh! The Movie. Uh, this is the very basic bog standard DVD edition of it. I never saw this as a kid, but um, I did watch it years later. It's quite entertaining. It's not super amazing, but it's, it's got some pretty interesting moments. Ah, and then there is Yu-Gi-Oh! Bonds Beyond Time, which is sort of a movie, sort of an OVA. I don't think this ever came to the cinema. Um, I think this came with a promo card or something. It's pretty good, but there is essentially one very big duel. And it kind of, it's so quick that it doesn't feel like a movie necessarily. By the time it's over, you're like, oh. Oh, okay, cool. Actually, the running time is exactly one hour. And honestly, it kind of feels like it. It kind of feels a little bit less. It, it's pretty good, but it's not as good as the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie. And the last movie in my collection is Yu-Gi-Oh! The Dark Side of Dimensions. So this is the um, Blu-ray edition. 
Now, this is a slightly more special version because it did, oh, it's already full now, and those are fallen as well. Comes with some pretty cool artwork of Blue Eyes Galaxy Dragon, I think he was. It also comes with this promo card, uh, hang on, which I think came in first pressings of the movie. So this is for theatrical distribution, and this is Obelisk the Tormentor. Now, this is unopened because I went to see this movie in the cinema and actually got one of these already, so I've opened it, so I'm keeping that one sealed. But honestly, this is a really good movie. I really enjoyed it. I'm not super, super into Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean, I've got both movies. I do really like the anime. But this genuinely, kind of like Dragon Ball Super Broly, almost stands on its own as its own mo movie. And it's also visually really, really nice. Well, that wraps it up for all of my anime, at least for now. I do have a few stacks waiting to be watched, so we'll do an update in about a year's time or however long it takes me to watch enough of them to justify another video. But thank you guys very much for watching, sitting through all three parts, or just this part, or just skipping to this part and not watching the rest of it. I appreciate you all the same. I'll leave a link to some playlists and stuff on the side there, but I'll let you get on with it. You've been sat down long enough now. So until next time, goodbye.